Hey, how you doing? My name is Liam. This is my hobby room. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for clicking on my video. Today, I have a very fun activity plan for the two of us, or the however many of us there are. So in this video, we're going to build the 1 to 144 scale entry grade RX-78 II Gundam, affectionately called the Granddaddy by, by fans. <laughs> and we're just gonna cover how to build a gunpla kit from start to finish. So that includes basic assembly, we're gonna do some sanding, puttying, we're gonna close seam lines, and some very simple modification that I think you're gonna really dig. And as ever with these videos, I hope this one inspires you to get and build your own Gunpla. Enjoy this ever-expanding global community of hobbyists and fans, because Gunpla is for everybody. It's for you, it could be for you. But you'll never know if you don't try, so pick up a Gunpla kit at your own leisure and follow along. Before we start, I'm gonna humbly ask that you like this video and subscribe to my channel down in the description below there, uh, because it, it, it helps. It helps. It's a nice way of saying, hey Liam, thanks for the Gunpla talk, man. Appreciate it. I like making these videos and it would just be nice to know that people like watching them. So thank you very much. And with that aside, let's get to the meat. Let's get to the meat of the video. Here are the runners. This plastic sheet of parts is printed with injection molding. And right away you can see the high quality molding technology at work. It's, it's pretty cool, actually, they can do this. Now, one of the reasons I love this kit so much is that it's wonderfully detailed, despite its super low price tag. This makes it a great practice kit, and a good option for customization. This is the full weapon set version, which comes with all its accessories, and currently retails for $18.99 Canadian on bchobbies.com, link down in the description below. There's also a stripped down basic version that comes with only the beam rifle and shield, that's even cheaper. So don't ever let someone tell you that you can't build on a budget. There are cheaper kits you can get. Uh, your, your options, of course, will be limited, surely, but you'll be able to get tools and supplies and a kit to get you started for a pretty low price tag. There are lots of kits like this, not necessarily just the entry grade ones. And not always, but usually these cheaper kits, like the, uh, the no grade 1 to 144 kits from Gundam Seed, uh, those ones are really great. They have limited articulation and they also are molded very simply. Uh, but that means it's a really great practice kit for you to start painting on. I don't have any of those kits right now, they're hard to come by at the moment. I don't think Bandai's printed them in a while, but I would like to do some videos on uh, hand painting, in specific focusing on hand painting with some of those kits, just because they come molded in very simple colors. But um, that's for another time, I'm gonna try and stay on topic. So if you do have a budget, I'd recommend picking up an entry grade kit. If you're wanting even more paints, tools, supplies, and whatever, then you'll have to save your pennies. But this is a really good starting point for a low price point. This particular kit doesn't even technically require a pair of nippers, though I'd recommend them as your cuts will be much cleaner and if you want to build another model kit in the future, you will need nippers. So I've linked the pair that I'm using here down in the description below along with links for all the other basic tools I typically use. So there's my nippers, uh, a hobby knife with a fresh blade, some sanding supplies, plastic putty and an applicator, and some Tamiya extra thin cement quick setting type. I never leave the home without it. This is, I think, the most essential basic toolkit you can have for building pretty much any plastic model. Our instructions for assembly really could not be simpler, it's just all pictures. So you can follow along with the steps by cutting out the corresponding pieces, or if you've built a kajillion of these mamajamas, then you can just go hog wild and cut out all the pieces now. Normally when cutting, it's safe to cut a little bit away from the part just so the built up tension within the runner doesn't divot your piece as you cut it out. However, however, this kit in specific has rounded gates that are really, really close to the part. This is because it's designed to actually just have you push the pieces out with your hand. I've done that on a few of these. I still just recommend cutting them out with a pair of nippers. Your cut's gonna be way cleaner. It's gonna be a lot easier to sand. You're not gonna have any divots into the, into the plastic. So, I don't know, just something to consider. If you really don't want it, if you're really set on using your hands, go for it. I'm not gonna stop you. When you've snipped your pieces out, you can cut away the excess nub. That's a fun word. That's that little bit that's left over from the, from the gate that you've cut it out of. Uh, you can cut away that excess nub and sand down your pieces to remove all the excess flash, the mold lines, and all the nub marks that, that are, you know, that are left over. When sanding your parts, always make sure to move from a heavy grit to a lighter grit. Uh, just remember that a heavier grit means your sanding will be a little more reductive. It's going to take away more material. And a lighter grit is better suited for polishing and finishing your surface after you've already roughed it up. You can use sandpaper, sanding sponges, files, whatever you want. Just go slow and be gentle until you know what you're doing. 
I will say though, if this is one of your first kits, I would avoid using a metal file just because if you're a little too rough with it, you're gonna take off way more than you need to. You're gonna leave a lot of marks that, uh, that are, you know, a little, little frustrating um, if you don't have some putty to deal with it. Certain parts when assembled will have a seam line, which is a visible join between two parts. Bandai's gotten pretty good at hiding these nowadays, but it's a fact of the molding process and just of the hobby in general that you're gonna have them here and there. Luckily, they are super easy to remove. Just press the parts together gently, and then run some extra thin cement down the seam line, then press the parts together evenly and just set them aside to cure. I sometimes use rubberized clamps from a hardware store that ensure that the parts get cemented properly just by adding even pressure around them, and depending on what cement you're using, the cure time can be different. But the extra thin quick setting cement from Tamiya dries and is workable very quickly. I'd say it's workable anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes after unless you've really loaded it on thick. It will take longer for these parts to fully cure, so let's just set these aside for now and continue with the build and keep the ball rolling. Let's say you snap a piece in half while you're building. Oh God, no! It's, oh God, it's broken. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. It's a super easy fix. You can actually use the cement you've already been using to fix that problem. Most breaks like this are simple to fix this way. Uh, if you break a peg or a joint, um, then things can get a little more complicated and require a bit more finesse. It's still very easy to solve those problems, but they're not really pertinent to this video, so I'm gonna talk about that another time. I'm gonna try really hard to stay on topic. <laughs> There's just so much stuff. Now, when those seam lines that you were closing up have cured, you can slice off the excess cement and sand down the joins. When you're done, the seam line will be gone. Ta-da! It's like magic. If there's still a visible gap, you can use some plastic putty to close it. And I use Tamiya Basic Type Putty for pretty much all of these little surface imperfections. Uh, it is a absolute must-have supply for any serious modeler. Once it's cured, in about 10 minutes, you can sand it down. This is a really, really great supply to have. Now, some parts like the V-fin come molded with little safety flags on the end. This is to prevent the part from breaking when it's in its packaging or when you're handling it or whatever, uh, but they don't look very good so I want to remove them. But before we do, notice how blunted the V-fin is. It should be a little bit sharper. And to that end, we're going to do some very simple modification. Take your runners and find a flat piece, like the little tag that tells you what part of the model kit it is. Cut that out and sand off any molded material. This will work best if the piece is flat. Obviously, you can use plastic card if you have that lying around as well. I'm or plot plates, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to err on the side that you don't have any. Now carefully cut a small piece off the end of your V-fin, and by cementing the extra runner bits to the V-fin that you just cut, you'll be adding material that you can then sharpen after it's cured. The result is a nice, snazzy, sharp V-fin. So when I'm building a kit, I keep in the back of my mind that some things may need to be disassembled for painting later, uh, and to that end, what I do is I just take the pieces and cut down the pegs on them just a little bit, uh, just to release some of the friction when I'm pulling pieces apart later so we don't have to hack things apart or damage the surfaces that I worked so hard making nice and smooth. Now when you're building, you might notice some large hollow spaces. This isn't abnormal, but it can be a little unsightly. So a common way to get rid of this is to fill these areas with epoxy putty or plastic and sand them down. I generally use a mix of the two uh, as you'll, you'll have tons of polystyrene plastic in the runners that your kit came on. Epoxy putty though is great at filling holes. Now take note, this is not the same type of putty that we were using to fix surface imperfections before. Epoxy putty is a two-part putty that has to be molded together into a solid color. Keep your hands wet with water while handling it and or use gloves. Uh, take care not to use too much though because you don't want to waste it. It's soft and sticky now but when it cures it's going to be rock hard and this typically takes anywhere from 8 to 10 hours depending on what type of epoxy putty you're using. So I usually just leave mine overnight. After it cures you can take a metal file and gently sand away the excess and finish it with regular sandpaper. Now after our hollow spots are filled in and sanded we can continue putting the kit together.
And bada bing, bada boom. We have our model kit assembled, look at that. Let's take a moment to admire our work. Good work. <laughs> Now don't worry about the discoloration of the putty, like the yellow parts for the, where the epoxy putty is and the gray Tamiya basic type putty. After we prime this kit and paint it in part three of this series, you're never gonna know they were there. Since this is the full weapon version of the entry grade RX-78 II Gundam, we've got some fun accessories to mess around with, like the beam trident, which unfortunately is just molded in gray plastic. So <laughs> that's a little underwhelming. I always enjoyed this weapon in the anime though. I, I wish it got some more love. We'll be able to paint this up later and make it look real nice, so don't worry about the gray beam trident for now. We've also got the Hyper Bazooka, which if we're wanting accuracy, I believe should have a white barrel. That might just be later incarnations of the RX-782 Gundam, but that's what we're going to do with this one. I, j I just think it'll look better that way. And we have the Gundam Hammer, which is super dumb. So dumb. <laughs> the series Turn A Gundam kind of made the Gundam Hammer cool again, but god, this thing is just so stupid. You also get two Beam Saber effect parts with this kit. These are the newer style, which are the longer ones. I personally prefer the shorter ones. I just think they look better, but you know, that's personal preference. But this with the beam rifle and the shield has always been my favorite way to display the RX-78 II Gundam. It's so classic, it's iconic, it looks so good. I'm just a big fan of this, this design. I hope you enjoyed this basic modeling video as much as I enjoyed making it. I always relish the opportunity to share my favorite hobby with anyone who will listen to Gundam Babble. Anyone, anywhere, lineups, waiting rooms, which is, I guess, just a lineup, but you're sitting down. I don't know. The adjacent stall in a bathroom. No one's safe from my Gundam babble. No one. <laughs> Watch out, I'm coming for you. That's creepy. Now, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends who might be interested in getting into the Gunpla hobby. It's a really fun hobby. It's fun to do in groups with your buds or your family with anybody. Stay tuned for part two of this series where we're gonna take our kit and add a whole bunch of stuff to it and really kick it up to the next level. It's still going to be kind of the same format, loosey-goosey, but step-by-step -step as you build the kit. If you wanna pick up this model kit for yourself, go to bchobbies.com, follow the description down in the link and use my coupon code LHR10 to save 10% off on any regular release Gunpla on the website. It's pretty sweet. Just from me to you. <laughs> hey, don't say I don't do nothing for you. With that said, take care of one another, everybody, and I will see you guys next time on Liam's Hobby Room. Self slip out of control.